Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Tonight, the way I want to improve your game night is to let you know what's inside this very large, very aptly named big box. This is the new second edition of Castle Panic in its giant box with all four of the expansions, every published expansion, as well as six promo cards, or sorry, seven promo cards and six promo towers. So this is honestly everything you can possibly have for Castle Panic from um, Fireside Games, all in one box. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack this open, take a look at it. One of the major changes from the old edition is a graphic update, so it's going to be worth checking out what all this looks like. So step one is going to be putting this down on the table and cutting the shrink off. And then we're going to take a look at what you get inside the box. Well, all right, so here you have the box for Castle Panic Big Box with the base game, all four expansions. One to six player game. This is one of the most popular co-op games out there. Ages eight and up, one hour playtime. This is a great one for family friendly game. You can see the list of awards. This is one over here, including multiple gold medals. This is a game that uh, until now I didn't even have in my collection. So I do have to thank Fireside Games for sending a review copy our way or else I'd never have Castle Panic in my collection. And I figure if I'm gonna dive in, why not dive all the way in with everything you can get all at once. So what we're gonna do quick is just take a look at the box, which I can't even fit because of my camera. And then I try to do this way and that just, you know, it's just, it's big. There's nothing all that interesting on the side. So we don't have to worry about that. Now here you get the back, which actually goes through everything that's in here. Some of the new stuff, you've got the original Castle Panic, you've got the Wizard's Towers, you've got the Dark Titan, you've got the Engines of War, and the brand new, with the second edition, Crowns and Quests, which actually gives you asymmetric power abilities and new end goal conditions other than defeating all the monsters, which that, I gotta say, sounds really good. So here's the back of the box, flip back over to the front, and let's crack this open and see how much we can fit on camera. All right, join the fun, follow them on Twitter. Earlier, I couldn't find their Twitter, so that was easy. Follow them all over the place, use their store locator, etc. cetera. Um, here are their most popular games. You'll notice most of them are Castle Panic, but they're also known uh, for some interesting games. I, I still want Here Kitty Kitty because it comes with tons of little tiny plastic cats, and that's awesome. Uh, we start right off with punch boards. Nice, big, heavy punch boards. Here's your promo towers here. Each of the towers does something different, which is kind of cool. Um, different weapons. You've got engineer cards. So the expansion stuff appears to be mixed right in with the original game from what I know here. So you got monster tokens. We're going to put this to the side somewhere because big. Tokens, tokens, tokens. Look at all these tokens. There are tokens everywhere. What I'm going to do is on one of these boards, I'll punch one of these so I can kind of show you the thickness. More monsters. Lots and lots of monsters. Now, what I'm hoping is that the expansion material is somehow um, has some kind of symbols on it or something. It looks like it. So I'm looking at this one has a symbol on the bottom of it. Oh, there we have something that punched itself. So I don't have to punch anything. Fire tokens, wizards, towers. Lots and lots of tokens. That's a lot of cardboard. So here is the token that punched itself and nice, not too thick. Like it's not ridiculous thick, but nice and thick, nice and solid. Artwork is great. You can check out that dragon right there. Tons of tokens. Something obviously is gonna fit here. Probably one of the tokens. You do have the die, which I guess is a difference from the original. Um, for one thing, they color coded it. So you know which of the three quadrants the, the number's in. So you're gonna roll. And I rolled the three in green, which once I show you the board, you'll know exactly what that means. I'm gonna slide the die back in there. We're gonna crack open this. These are from the quest expansion. Once I figure out how they've sealed this. Okay, it's up here. Looks like there's lots of space for all those tokens, which I'd expect. So I this is a tracker, obelisk of oblivion. So what you have is a bunch of standard quests. And then there should be some other colored ones. Yes, end game quests. So now what you would do is randomly get one of these long detailed quests and you would have to complete this to win the game. But then when you get to the end game, you also have another final quest to complete. Now I will point this out. Uh, these are a little warped. You can kind of see it there. A little bit of a bend to them. 
They are a nice thick card though. Like you can kind of, they're not paper. There are a ton of them. Look at them all. Look at all these quests. We're gonna put that over here. And then end game, these are actually even a little, little bit more, but not too bad. You know, I'll put those under something heavy for a while to probably be fine. All these different end game quests. Panda tracker. I don't know if that's for one specific quest or not. Then we got a ton of cards. I'm trying to think of the best way to show this off with these cards because there's so much stuff in the background. I don't want to. Oh, you know what? I'm going to put the cards aside. Let's get to this. So this is also. Oh, you got the rule book with the um, the board. More stuff. I don't quite know what it is. All right. So this is one of the new components in the second edition. In this edition, this is a bag to draw the chips out of instead of just putting them out on the table with the awesome grumpy orc on the cover. Dig it. Standees for all the walls, etc. I'm not going to bother showing those off in any particular way. I got to say the, the organization here looks great. I might actually do a separate reboxing video where I kind of show where everything goes, but I'm not going to do that today. Uh, let's get this open. Kind of trying to decide where to go here next. These are all in resealable plastic, which is a nice bonus, but I don't think I'm going to bother putting, say, the board and the rule book back into plastic. That would just be annoying. So this is resealable if you do really want to take care of your board. Personally, I'm just tossing that aside. The board here. Here you've got the board, which is a giant hexagon. And you're going to sit there and you got the three, the green, the red, the blue. You're going to build your castle in the middle and the bad guys are going to come in from the sides. Um, it's the exact same board as the original printing of the game, the first printing, but with updated graphics, more clarity. Also some rule summaries on the end. So there's the board. Nice fourfold, nice and thick. Then you have what I think is one of the coolest things they've included here, which will be interesting when I actually do start to play is how useful it is as a brand new player, is look at that. They have done the big box rule book that has the rules for everything. Absolutely everything is included in this rule book, all the expansions, all that content. So what I'm gonna do is put this off to the side for now, and we're gonna flip through this pretty quickly. You gotta say the three column layout's nice, Fonts nice and big. I don't know how well you can see that there. That's nice and readable. I can read that at arm's length. Looks like lots of great looking artwork explaining the board, the various hand size based on player counts, the different monster attacks. This looks extremely well done, actually. Shows the monster moving step by step. Um, it's not pictures of actual game components, but it's at least digital art of actual game components. It's not black and white. It's color. Again, the artwork's really nice. I got to say, these are really nice artwork. So it's showing various drawing new monsters and then optional rules for less panic. Okay, so the all-in-one rule book wasn't quite, I thought it was going to be like all the rules for Wizard's Tower would be mixed in with the core rules, but it's not like that. So as a, a someone new to Castle Panic, I appreciate this. So here's the Castle Panic rules, right? So not too bad. You're only looking at 14 pages, which there's a lot of white space here in artwork. This could probably be cut down to probably four pages because it also includes like a sample turn. Uh, then we have the Wizard's Tower expansion, which yes, of course, includes some new monsters and stuff like that. We're gonna go through this pretty quickly. Again, nice big, we're down to double column on this. This is even easier to read, bonus there. Tons of artwork showing off all the different creatures and their abilities. And again, less rules to make it more or less difficult. And then we have the Dark Titan expansion. Which now I'm just going to speed up a bit, kind of get the idea of the Engines of War expansion, which of course has siege engines and keeps and catapults and all kinds of fun things like that. Ballistas, encampments, and then the Crowns and Quests, which again, for those of you who play first edition Castle Panic, this is the first new expansion. This is the first new thing in this box, which is also available separately. You don't have to buy the big box to get this, which like I said includes asymmetric abilities and new game end conditions. And then the ridiculous setup chart for, um, the, I don't even know, the number of players, number of cards in hands. So yes, if you're playing just the core game, you're gonna do this. But if you're playing with all four expansions, you're gonna do this. I gotta say, this is a little ridiculous, but I, you know what, I'm sure I'm gonna appreciate it once I actually sit down. So it's, it's all the possible combinations of the expansions and what you need to, to set up the game. Appreciate it, but it seems a little silly. Um, and then, yeah, same thing here with a monster setup chart 
which I guess which monsters you're going to include in the game. Hopefully there's a, a clear way to delineate these by the tokens. You're not like cross-referencing the back of the book. Now, since I have space here, I'm going to go through the cards. So you have resource cards and castle panic cards, which will be the, the, the cards that you will use while playing to defeat the monsters. So here you have your various cards that you get during the game, um, including some summary cards. So summary cards. And then they all say Castle Panic on the back. You have your various archer that can attack all ways. It's an any color archer. You have the any color knight that can attack any colors. And then of course, you're going to have the blue archers, the blue knights, and so on. Anyone will know this if they played the original game, Fortify Wall. What I really want to highlight here is the new artwork, which I think is really well done. Um, from what I understand, I hadn't played the original. This is more diverse, which is always good to see. And it looks like it is based on the cards I'm seeing so far. Now, I will note it's the same artwork kind of repeated with different colors, like the red archer and the yellow archer is the same piece of artwork, but wearing more red or yellow. Um, then there's some nice artwork of nice shot and so on. Now, I don't know the original artwork to know how much better this is, but I guess this looks great. There's kind of a an animated feature kind of look to this. So those are the character cards, the or character player cards, the cards you're going to use. Resource cards, I don't even know. I don't think those were in the base game. I think that might be something new or new from when they do the expansions, new to me. Oh, just one resource card, Jury Rig. Okay, so these are all the cards. So this is the core game, I'm assuming. I don't wanna mix these up. And then these all do have a symbol on the bottom to sort them out. So these are all, I have obviously expansion cards and then like a new order of play for the Crown and Quest version of the game. We got a bunch of those. And then whatever resource cards are, we got a whole bunch of those. Yeah, bricks and mortar and rope and wood. Hey, I gotta say, adding resource management to this sounds good to me. Uh, wizard cards, obviously from the Wizard's Tower expansion. Card quality is good here. I probably should have called that out earlier. A little glossy, which um, might be a difficult for people who have pot lights in their game room, like some people we may know. Again, the artwork's really nice. I, I really appreciate this art. And look at the size of that font and the text. That is really nice. I get being be an aging gamer. It's really nice to see um, clear iconography as well as really nice large font text. Yeah, nice cards. Really nice card. The size feels weird. Like they don't feel like you might need special card sleeves for these. And then we have some more character cards. That are, they say they're all special. They're probably from one of the expansions. So I personally don't want to mix up these with these because I think those are the core game cards. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the box back for a second because there's some nice ways to sort cards here, it looks like. And we're going to... Do those fit there? No, maybe that's for something else. So we're going to throw core game cards back over here. And then I don't know. I'll split these. So yes, let's let's put this group here. Um, this will obviously fit sleeved cards, which is always good to see. I have no idea if these are what's supposed to go here, but it works for now for sorting things for me. I'm just breaking them up by the card backs that they had. This will work. There. Now I'm not going to get my things messed up, which leads me to these oversized cards in the middle. Oh, bonus baggies. Always appreciate that. Especially when you have something so obviously designed to hold the various tokens, having baggies as well is a nice touch. Again, what I'm going to do is get this out of the way so we can look at these. Uh, these are the characters. Adds asymmetric powers to your games of Castle Panic. Again, appreciate the artwork. It's so like we have different uh, nationalities, cultures being represented. Dig it. Oh, sorry. I got a lot of glare at that angle. My bad. Even someone in a wheelchair. Nice. I dig it. Other side of these are just say characters. What's neat here is when you're assigned a character, you're also assigned a tower. And if the tower is destroyed, you can no longer use the person's ability. So again, resealable envelope to put this in. I am not going to personally do that right now. I'm just putting them back in the box where they were. Um, these look like summary cards, but we'll see. Monster Tokens, the Dark Titan. Oh, okay, so it's a summary of the Dark Titan's monster tokens. 
monster tokens, the Dark Titan. So those, that's what all, all of these are? Okay, a whole bunch of these are. So monster summaries in the Dark Titan. Uh, whatever the first heralds are. This looks like expansion content again. Yeah, we have Argonok, whoever he happens to be. Looks very angry. Then we have Mega Boss Monster, the Wizard's Tower. So this is obviously the Wizard's Tower expansion info. And then we have Engines of War. So these are like the reference cards for the different expansions. Fair enough. Now here the deck's a little smaller, but at least this is a card I'm going to pick up and hold in my hand, not something I want to be able to see from across the table. So let's get this back up here and figure out these have to go in first. I gotta say, this insert looks fantastic. I can tell there's all kinds of different sized slots to hold various different things. But before punching it, I'm not going to be able to tell you what goes where or how it's supposed to be. Um, these look like they go first, then these. There we go. Um, these don't specifically have a spot right now, but I'm going to shove them in there. Yeah, I would have to punch the entire game to be able to fit everything to, to know where it all goes. So there you go. I think I've got everything. All these oversized cards do go over here. What you are going to find here is a lot of uh, box gap air above the thing once you take the cardboard punch outs out. So what I'm going to recommend is a, a Board Gamer Pro tip, uh, depending on how you store your games. But if you store vertical at all, take these cardboard inserts and put them underneath the actual box insert. That way you'll still fill up more of this space. And yes, I know the rule book wasn't on top, but I want it on top because I want to read the rules to be able to play it. There you go, Castle Panic Big Box. Massive rule book, but that's for a whole ton of uh, expansions as well as the base game. Does include all of the expansions in one rule book, but not like it's one set of rules. You read cover to cover and it just, well, you could read it cover to cover. I was expecting to have the rules for the expansion mixed in with the rules for the base game, and they're not. That, to me, is a good thing because I'm new to this. And if I wasn't new to this, maybe I'd want it the other way. All right, all I got left to do is toss the lid on here. So there you have what you get with the Castle Panic Big Box from Fireside Games. Big, chunky, you might have just heard that on my desk. Big, chunky uh, copy of Castle Panic with absolutely everything that's ever been published for it all in one place. Updated artwork, uh, improved rule book, more clarity than the first edition. Plus, you get all the promo cards, which is actually pretty neat to get at the same time. This is an extremely popular cooperative card game that I am really looking forward to playing. Um, it's ages 8+. plus. Now, my kids are older than that, but I have a feeling my kids are really going to dig this one. Plus, it's also a high-player count game. There's not a lot of one-hour, six-player games out there. And I am thinking this is going to be fantastic for public play events. I am really looking forward to checking out Castle Panic Big Box. Thank you for joining me for this video. Now, if you do want some more information on this game and want to know how I feel about it once I do start getting it played, be sure to follow me on social media as Tabletop Bellhop. One word, pretty much everywhere. You can head over to the Tabletop Bellhop blog at tabletopbellhop.com and, of course, watch our YouTube channel and our Twitch streams. Finally, you can go and subscribe to the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. I'm like, I'm wondering, I, I might need to start making one of those linky pages where it just has links to all these things. But if you Google Tabletop Bellhop, you'll find me, and eventually you'll see my thoughts on Castle Panic Big Box. Good day, and game on.